at minus 26 degrees south years and I'm walking in a snow field until I discovered a live T-34. Hey guys, how are you doing? Ben here. Welcome to the new episode. And I felt kind of overwhelmed uh, about all your great responses during my last several videos, which I paint uh, the giant king tiger, the panda, and so on and so forth. So in this episode, I'm gonna paint the major counterpart of all those great German tanks during the World War II, which is the almighty T-34. So this T-34 is another 1.6 scale full metal RC tank from Warslug. If you have seen my previous videos, uh, the model quality is as good, if not better, than their previous released King Tiger and Panda. I'll put more detailed information in the description. And now let's get started painting this little beast. As you can see, the model does not come with any weld seams or things like that. So we have to deal with that first. Uh, with the aid of real photo references, I used some uh, epoxy putty and sculpting tool to slowly shape all the weld seams and molding lines around the whole tank. It quickly became very tedious, but it will give me a very good starting point. And one thing I have to point out is that the whole turret is actually die-casted aluminum. A very impressive, but that surely is an expensive route of manufacturing stuff like this size. Right, so as you can see now, we have moved the tank into this giant spray booth uh, after we finished uh, all the well seams, uh, the molding lines, and also some you know, details around the whole tank. And uh, it's now pretty much ready for painting, but before that, since it's still a scale model, uh, we're gonna make it as realistic as possible, but also it's a T-34, a Russian tank. So we have to make some changes around all these, say, the handles, the grills, the barrels, uh, to make it like, you know, war ready machine. But since it's a very expensive model, won't do something that is very crazy, only a little bit modifications, very subtle, very delicate. To achieve that effect, this is what we're gonna use for that draw. So, this is the handle. We're gonna, you know, <laughs> make something happen, like. Right, so it's now it's, it's pretty nice. Pretty nice. So now we have to remove the barrels to make some damages on the on these ones as well. And already loosen the nuts uh, underneath of the, uh, 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 this belt so we can just take it out quite easily, like this. So this is the barrel, really tough. And now we're gonna use the hammer, <laughs> this rubber hammer. I'm gonna just. Right, so this one is an, uh, a new barrel. So I want to make a comparison between this one and uh, the one that has been hammered. Uh, as you can see clearly that uh, this one is for sure looks better, you know, for some, for some people. For these grills, I'm gonna just use this clipper. So this is how a T-34 should be look like. Make it like this. Just like a real tank. So we're gonna do something like this on the storage box. Uh, it's not too much, but uh, I think that will do. This feels like a, a huge photo edge parts, but it's way more, way much more fun. Right. 
And now we have removed the tracks, which is pretty heavy. And uh, we also removed all the rubber rings around the road wheels, which is like this, so that we can make some damages along the edges of this wheel to make it more realistic. It's easier to paint uh, the whole lower hull without ruining the, the rubber rings. For this purpose, we're going to use some uh, power tool like this. And then we're going to just damage this ring. Now it's more like it's been used for a while, you know, on the battlefield, uh, which is uh, makes ma makes more sense uh, on the pretty much uh, well used T thirty four. Here are just a bunch of rubber rings we have been modified, and the damage on this thing is pretty cool. So after painted all the uh, the, the tanks, and we can just install this back on and now i'm starting to prime the model i use car primers and the reason for a gray one instead of uh, oxide red is simply because with the gray it is way easier for me to spot surface imperfections the oxide red will be painted short after all right so now we have finished painting the car primer on the t34 and we're gonna leave it overnight in this baking spray room, spray booth. And uh, we're gonna back on painting tomorrow morning. So after one night's drying time, I think it's, it's now okay to proceed. Let's see. It's completely dried and tough. Very nice. It looks like the, the new car paint we're using, I mean, I mean we, we used is, is, is quite nice for, for the job. And you see closely that uh, the paint is really, really nice and flat and has a nice sheen to this. It's a satin finish to this and it's quite tough. I don't know if you can hear this, but I'm scratching it really hard. The paint is not coming off, but uh, it only leaves some no tiny little scratches but the paint is really hard great okay so now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna recreate some of the surface textures uh, with with putties um, let's do this so now what we have here is a uh, is a surface primer uh, I added some uh, Tamaya great primer into this thing and make it thicker so it's easier to create uh, textures. Right, so we're gonna start from the turret. It's, it's pretty thick and uh, we're gonna just apply this into the tank's turret like this and apply the uh, putty randomly. Also the same thing we're going to apply to the uh, the side armor plate. Oh, that smells really bad. <laughs> so I just applied some of the putties onto the surface of the tank. Uh, but one thing uh, I want to do is like since the, tar the, since the turret is costed, the whole thing is costed still, uh, I mean, on the real tank, so the texture on this one is rougher. So I will create some even more dramatic textures on this one. To do this, I use uh, more Tamaya gray putty and just mix some of these liquid putty to make it to make a really thick 
rich texture. The smell is really bad, but you know, for the sake of video recording, I have to. I have to do. <laughs> I have to do this. So when I do this, remember to wear a mask. That is really okay. So now, as you can see, that texture is really, really nice, right? And I just gonna put this thing onto onto the tank to make it rougher. And later on, I will sand it down a bit with sandpapers. So now we'll just just put it randomly on the on the tank. And uh, I'm not I'm not going to to be shy on this effect. I just want to do it as rough as I can. Now just clean uh, all these areas while I can. The, the, the tank is still pretty smelly and uh, as now you can see that uh, the texture we create is really really nice and realistic just like the real thing especially the texture on the turret the imperfection casting marks and now I will just use the sandpaper to remove some of the putty so that the effect can be more subtle especially on the armor plate here because it's not it's, it's not casting marks but uh, it's the marks that as you can see that so these are the you no know, tiny marks on the armor plate so we can just send it down a little bit So now we can apply the red primer, the red hole primer as the base coat. I started to lay down the first coat of paint. As you may see, it is a very light and pale color. And the reason for this is because red is a very dominant color. And if I spray dark green on top of that directly, a very thick layer of paint will be needed to overpower the red. But with the help of this lighter tone, I can easily get the desired color. You'll see in a second. I'm still using Tamaya colors, my favorite. We're gonna mix some paint in this, this bottle. There's one jar, another jar. Another. It's pretty good. Bright yellow. Just a little bit, yes.
now the ba base color, the, all the green tones are ready, and we have just the, the the hues and the saturations for two or three times already. But for the sake of the you know the length of the video, I just uh, skip one of the uh, the process, so you may enjoy the fun part. And chipping is one crucial part that I have to nail to ensure a warm but balanced look of a typical T34. With some thinner, alcohol, various brushes and some tools, I work very carefully around every detail that might be damaged or scratched. It's not seems too much work on the video, but it actually took me about two days to complete this chipping part. We, we took a long we took a long time to make all the chippings around the, the whole tank and uh, here's is a uh, how the tanks looks like now the size and, and uh, the, the big numbers on the side of the turret is one crucial part for uh, the, the whole project I mean if I want to paint it a good looking one I have to have that I want to make the uh, number uh, 532 tank, which belongs to, I believe, the 222nd Independent Tank Regiment, according to the book. And uh, as you can see, uh, it's got a quite large propaganda here, which means death to the enemies, of course, in Russian. And uh, a big 532 number here. So what I'm doing now is just roughly draw the numbers out and uh, see how it looks like. Okay, so the letters looks pretty good. Protect them with some liquid mask, and I might start dealing with the winter camouflage. Now, as you can see that uh, the most of the uh, winter camouflage is done. So it's about two days work, which is uh, quite a lot. And uh, if you see closely, and most of the effects are done directly by the airbrush. I didn't do too much, I mean, in terms of uh, hairspray method, chipping. So I think this one is more natural for, you know, visual effects. And also, I did a lot of uh, see like uh, panel separations uh, using the the white color, which will make the panels more interesting. And now, what we're gonna do is to spray or paint the giant five three two number on the turret side.
Now it's time to play with oils. Nearly all the weather effects are painted with acrylics,、uh, such as dirt, and dust, and rust. The good thing about this is that I can not only achieve the exact look that I'm after, but also I can wash it with a water hose after running it in the field while maintaining all the effects. Furthermore, with no pigments or real dust on the tank whatsoever, I can comfortably display it anywhere. In other words, it looks dirty, but actually clean to the touch. Last but not least,、uh, a day or two was spent on all the other tiny details here and there to ensure the model is finished to a high standard. After around two weeks of hard work, I can now finally say it is finished. I've done as much as I can during that time, and personally speaking, the overall effect is quite pleasing. When I finished this T34,、uh, I was being invited to one of the best European motor shows、uh, in Mosan、uh, to present my works. With the help of a lot of friends, and I was being able to bring this T34 as long as the King Tiger that I finished some time ago together to Hungary and presented on the stage. It was really fun to share all my experiences and stories to the crowd, and also it is super rewarding when you see people's reaction when they see and touch model in real life. So he's the main organizer of the whole event.、Uh, that really means a lot to me. And finally, I was being lucky enough to receive a special award from the、so、organizer of the show, which is really great. To, to your effort, to your, to your work.、Uh, anyways, I thank you for all your support, and this is what keeps this channel existing and alive. You may also want to check out my other videos, especially the Ace Pilot, which I finished not long time ago.、Uh, any more informations will be down there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.